Georgette was right. This is the probably the hardest thing that a person has to do. Um, my name is Christina Martin, and I'm from Michigan. And um, oh Lord, Jesus. <clears throat> Well, first, I, I also want to say that this, when he said that you live in a living hell, this is um, my self-portrait that I painted. Um, this is after I realized that I was healed by Christ from my abortions, but this is what I lived inside of me for 25 years. Um, my, my name was Christina Martin, and I was born in a Sicilian family with a very controlling father. By the age of 13, my parents were divorced. At age 14, I had my first <clears throat> boyfriend. And at 15 years old and four months, I was pregnant. Before my 18th birthday, I had three abortions by the same boyfriend. And by the time I was 20 years old, I had four. And I kept silent for 25 years because I was afraid to tell a single soul. <laughs> I am here today because I don't want to be silent anymore. When I found out I was pregnant, I was so scared and confused, and I did not know what to do. My boyfriend and his sister-in-law sat me down. Oh, Lord, help me. Okay, I got that. Okay. He sat me down, and, they, and it was in this, like, big blue truck. <clears throat> and then they convinced me that this was the right thing to do. She had an abortion also. My boyfriend was very controlling, and he was also a coward. He took me to the abortion clinic, and I was so young and naive that I agreed to go. I was afraid that my dad would kill me, too, because he's Sicilian. And, and so everything went so fast. And I remember lying on the table, and I was shaking, and I was so scared. And then I asked them if they would stop, because I changed my mind, and they didn't stop. And then I screamed because it hurt so badly. And then I asked what they were going to do with the baby. And the woman said that they were going to put it in the bucket. And I, I wanted to... I wanted to get off the table, and then I wanted to get the baby so bad, but I didn't, and it was too late. And then I don't remember anything after that until I woke up in this yellow room with a lot of other women. My life was never the same after that day. And now I truly hated myself and what I did, and I didn't even want to be me anymore. But I had to. And then I began to cry a lot, just out of the blue. And I was depressed, and I was oppressed. And then I wanted to run away, but I didn't, and I stayed. And that stupid relationship. And the second abortion made me very, very sick. And I bled a lot, and I had a high fever. And I think it's because they used, I think it was because they used dirty instruments, but I don't know. And then I missed... <laughs> it's okay. It, this is okay. It is okay to tell. It is. It's okay. <laughs> okay. And then... <laughs> okay. And then I missed a lot of school that year. And... And then this time was the third time, and the torture was so strong inside of me that, and since I hated myself anyways, it just seemed like the right thing to do again. And I remember walking down this light blue, long, dirty, ugly hallway, and I changed my name every time I went so that they didn't know that it was me, because we kept going to this same clinic. And they took me into this room and they did an ultrasound, which I never seen. And they said that the baby, or they didn't say the baby, they said that it might be in your fallopian 
tube, and so it was dangerous. And so then again, I found myself on that st stupid table. And all I remember is being back home, and I cried all night long. And why didn't I stop myself? And how could I stop myself from doing this to all my unborn babies? And I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and by the time I had my fourth abortion, I was, I was just so disconnected from everything. I didn't even care anymore. And I knew how unworthy I felt, so I just had the abortion anyway. And I wished that somehow someone wouldn't have come in there and rescue me and, and tell them to stop, because I couldn't. And I remember asking the Lord to please help me. Please, God, I can't do this anymore. And I almost had, I almost, thank you, Jesus, when I, I almost had five abortions because then I was pregnant again. And when I ran away in my move to Florida, but I called the clinic, and this is the hand of God, and I called the clinic, and I said, I said, I had four abortions, and I want to come in and have another one. And the lady said, what? And she said, you had four abortions? She says, that's dangerous. She said, I don't think you should come in. And by the hand of God, I gave birth to my daughter, Angelica. Thank you, Jesus. And even though my teen years were lost in a large part of my life, but Jesus restored my life. And only by his grace and mercy is myself and any of us able to tell this story. And this is for all the babies that were silenced. My voice speaks for them. And today I have three children living that I gave birth to and a grandson. <laughs> and I dedicate this to my husband, Darren, who really said he believes in me. And he knows my story and he loves me anyways. <laughs> and I just, and so my three children are Angelica, Blake, and Danielle. And my, my three, my four aborted children are Grace Marie, Christina, with the C. JJ and Emily. Thank you.